Hey, what's up you guys? It's Caboose bringing you another Gotham Knights video and today what I got for you guys here is an extremely exciting video. Not too long ago, I was brought all the way out to Montreal by WB Games, a huge thank you to them to try out and get my hands on with this game right here. We got a studio tour as well, which was amazing. I always love to get a little peek behind the curtain as to what game development is like. I got a shirt as well signed by the entire dev team and I couldn't thank them enough for how kind they were to me and to all the people that were able to attend and check out WB Games Montreal and what they're working on with Gotham Knights. I've prepared for you guys a lot of exclusive gameplay to showcase in this video. And before we jump into everything, if you're looking forward to Gotham Knights, we're at the home stretch. If you can't wait to see some exclusive gameplay on this channel, scroll down right now, hit that thumbs up button, share your hype with me, and let's get this video to 2,500 likes for the Gotham Knights hype. And don't worry, this is the first of a couple of videos that I prepared for you guys showing off this game. I have a lot of content to get through, so make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on those notifications, you'll be immediately notified when a video goes live. And with that being said, Let's jump in and talk about my hands-on with Gotham Knights. Some immediate housekeeping, please keep in mind that I did not play a final build of the game and that it was a dev build with background apps running to log bugs or issues that I might have run into. And by the way, I barely ran into any. This caused a few frame hiccups, which I hope are not to be expected come time for the actual release. And when I first jumped into play, I played through the opening 16 minutes, which you may remember that IGN had premiered on their channel when they were doing their month worth of coverage with IGN first and you've already heard me speak at length about the opening 16 minutes but to reiterate a few points straight away from the atmosphere you get the vibe that while gotham knights has moments of campiness and some shoddy voice acting here and there this game is trying to take itself for the most part very seriously and is a hundred thousand percent committing to batman being dead dead with that being said though it had my jaw to the floor to find out that batman's presence is still very much felt in gotham knights when you head to the training area you'll come to learn that it's actually batman himself who helps you train and learn new skills physical and mental preparation go hand in hand here we can train the mind to prepare the body but it requires deep focus. Let go of your grief and concentrate on my voice. Through this training that you're gonna forge your path to knighthood. I don't know if you're gonna see him every single time, but through messages he seemingly left behind, you'll hear him speaking to you, helping you process your grief and hone in on these skills that you're learning. After the opening mission though, you're gonna learn how to summon your bat cycle. It's a pretty sweet moment and you have to ride your bat cycle over to the belfry to essentially start the game. Immediately, I noticed how full the open world is. And this wasn't just because it was the opening minutes of the game. While I was wasn't able to capture video of it, I was allowed to just free roam around the open world and I ran into plenty of civilians and I even crashed into a couple of cars on the streets. Listen, the city isn't filled to the brim end to end with people shoulder to shoulder on the sidewalks, but there's plenty of people you're going to run into, plenty of cars on the street. It's not a completely dead open world. You'll even see out in the open world that there's plenty of premeditated and random crimes that are happening that you'll have to try and stop. Whether it's in alleyways, the city streets themselves, or on rooftops, you'll have a lot to do in Gotham City. The only thing is, and I don't know if this is just because of my limited time playing the game, I didn't notice a ton of variety in the actual random crimes that were taking place. Again, I don't know if this is just because I only had about 15 to 20 minutes to free roam around the open world, or if this is just because some of the random crimes around the city are a bit generic, so jury's still out on that. Let's jump in now into the actual characters themselves. Right off the bat, or in this case, Bird, I was pretty hooked with Robin and the time that I had with that character. That's the first one I wanted to jump into this game with because it's the character we've seen the least from. He's nimble, he's quick on his feet, and he's got a slingshot for a ranged attack. But the staff provides some very satisfying gameplay with heavy impact on every hit slash takedown. His traversal is not the greatest in the world, admittedly, but if you use it sparingly, it can add a nice bit of flair for you to get from point A to point B around Gotham. I just don't know how much I'm going to use it to travel actual distances or at least use up the 10 seconds that you have when you're doing the teleport just because it slows down the pace a little bit. Nightwing was also a really fun character for me to play as. Being the acrobat of the group, it can make it very fun actually to time your perfect evades for some crazy unique animations. And listen, you can call it what you want, a Fortnite glider this or whatever that, I do not care. Trust me when I say though, if you're gonna get this game, when you get your hands on and you play as Nightwing, you're gonna have way too much fun with the flying trapeze. It's a blast to use honestly, and I was told as well that you can pretty much get from one end of the map to the other if you're using it properly 
properly, which is very nice. Backer was another massive hit for me. Her beatdown ability, which you've seen about two years ago now when Gotham Knights was first revealed, is probably the most addicting move in the game. Literally never gets old. And it's been stated before by the developers themselves, and I'll reiterate for you that yes, Batgirl is probably the closest to home if you need to scratch that Arkham game itch. Please do keep in mind though, that this is still not an Arkham game. And because of that, there will be some things that are different. You might feel a sense of similarity, but this is not meant to be a one-to-one -one translation of something like the Batman Arkham Glide or the Batman Arkham Combat. And then there's a little old Red Hood. I was committed to making this character look good. He got the most crap out of all the knights, and I'm happy to report that Red Hood is damn fun to play. It's interesting because he still does feel a little weighty, and from the outside looking in, he may seem like a floaty character. But what makes Red Hood so unique is that he is quite literally a tank. He's the biggest of the bunch, the strongest of the bunch, and has the most effective range abilities out of all four members of the Gotham Knights. Every melee attack packs quite the punch, and it's very satisfying to be shooting at an enemy, seeing someone approach you from behind, pull down the left stick, and use the range attack to have Red Hood aim his gun behind his head, and stop the second enemy in their tracks. There's even a moment in my gameplay where I was ping-ponging between enemies. It looked pretty sweet and it felt even better. The jury's still out though on the mystical leap, okay? I'm still not 100% sure how I feel about it, but I think using it sparingly, similar to Robin's teleport, is probably the way to go. The unfortunate reality though here with Gotham Knights is that it's sorely missing some form of a counter or a parry option. At least I wasn't able to figure out if there was one during my time with the game. I don't mind the evade system and I still had fun with what I played. Like I said, some characters are actually a good time to evade with, like Robin or Nightwing. They have cool animations. But having the ability to counter enemy attacks would maintain the pace of every combat encounter, rather than you having to halt your attacks and jump out of the way. I think I adapted fairly well to the structure of Gotham Knights gameplay, but I will miss being able to block incoming hits, and I hope that there's something in there that I just didn't see. Back to some positives, though. The customization in Gotham Knights is nuts. I was only able to specifically customize one skin as the rest were transmogs, but even the transmogs were damn cool to look at. I can't wait to jump in and unlock these suits, customize the gear attached to them, and see what different colorways work best. Also, there's some pretty sweet Easter eggs tied to the actual colorways themselves. This is one of my most anticipated features for Gotham Knights, and based on what I was able to see with my own two eyes, it doesn't seem like it's going to disappoint. I also got to jump into the opening and ending of the Harley Quinn mission chain in my time playing the game. I wasn't able to play through all the stuff in between, but her introduction is pretty great and leads to a super fun, high-octane prison riot battle that I'm itching to jump back in and play through again. Even though this is side content, I'm quite impressed overall with the narrative here, and while sometimes the voice acting can definitely feel a little off, there are other instances where the performances are quite brilliant and nuanced. I wasn't sure you were coming, Alfred. I'll always be here when you need me, Master Richard. When any of you need me. I'm glad you're here. As am I, Master Tim. This place does need work. Damn it! We've got activity all over the city. Sweet. Looks like my plan wins. The knights bounce off each other really well. While I have some gripes with Red Hood's gameplay, Steven Oyoung does a bang bang up job with the voice of Jason Todd. I love him as that character. Wait, hasn't Harley Quinn been out of Gotham ever since, you know, her ex? Killed me? Isn't that what you meant? Rumor has it she did some government thing, went straight. Ish. She's got something. Moving on though, I also got to jump in and try out the finale of the mission chain against Harley Quinn, and I was also able to team up with one of the developers working at WB Montreal on Gotham Knights and try out some co-op in the game. And I can't stress enough how much fun this is. The developer asked me before we jumped in if I wanted to go guns a-blazing or if I wanted to try and jump in and do some stealth. And originally I wanted to just be loud because I'm horrible at stealth games and I'm horrible at stealth encounters. But about halfway through we walked into a room and we both kind of looked at each other like, let's do this stealthily 
properly and we took down all the enemies without making a sound and it was so much fun. I know for some people they want to just jump in and experience this game solo and that's totally fine but if a buddy of yours has the game on the same platform as you just try roaming around the city together. Knowing the co-op is untethered you'll find plenty of badass moments where you're being overwhelmed by enemies, you're back against the wall and one of the knights descends from above to lend you a hand. Oh yeah and hey speaking of being overwhelmed yes you can indeed change the difficulty. I played on medium difficulty with my hands on and I still found myself getting hit from time to time and there were a couple of instances where I almost died. I know some people were looking at the gameplay that we've been getting the last couple of months and thinking that it just looks way too easy but trust me when I had my hands on I wasn't just smooth sailing the whole way through. I'm sure when you're playing on the harder difficulties it's going to make you feel even more important that you're utilizing all aspects of your character and I don't really want to touch up too much on the visuals for this game. In my personal opinion it looks great and what I played I still think the same thing but there was a question I had when that PC trailer dropped and I tracked it down for you guys and based on what I was told I can confirm officially for you that on consoles Gotham Knights will have ray tracing enabled it's not just for PC I think overall I had a great time playing Gotham Knights and I'm really excited to jump back in for release in just a couple of weeks from now I have my reservations it's not all perfect there's a couple of things that I had a problem with but I'm very intrigued to see what you guys are going to think about it once you get your hands on the game I honestly think that a lot of people are going to be pleasantly surprised with Gotham Knights I guess we're just going to have to wait and see and thankfully we're not going to have to wait that long and there you have it I tried to be as unbiased as possible I promise you guys that I'm doing my best here to look for things that I didn't like so that you won't sit there and tell me that I'm just being paid off okay I went in with an open mind I went in with a clear head there's some things that I loved some things that I didn't love and I laid it all out on the floor for you guys all right so now it's just up to you to make your own decision and with that being said again a huge thank you to WB Games for sending me out to Montreal for being able to see the murals as well that was such an amazing trip such a good time and I also am very grateful that I got to get my hands on with this game so that I can bring this kind of video for you guys and if you enjoyed today's video if you could consider hitting that thumbs up button it would show your support and I would really appreciate it I'm Caboose and I'll see you guys later